A pile of rubbish. There's a broken gramophone in the pile. Maybe its horn could come in handy. signaling spotlight with a jury-rigged sound system. It looks like a small speaker is in the compartment. I'll take it. I wonder if it could still work. A modern wonder of acoustic light technology. I must patent it at once. It appears to be an abandoned lighthouse. I wonder if it still works. I think I'm getting how this works. Getting there, I think. Was that it? Did I do whatever this was? Damn it, I so wanted to patent that. He's talking with the bus driver. I don't want to interrupt. He looks like the type who could get violent. get to there from here.
you've finally arrived. Years I've been waiting. I never imagined they would send someone so young. What does the cat say at midnight? Nothing. Only a cat of Ulthar can speak. I knew that the keepers of the key had not forgotten about me. Zadok has lost all hope by now. We have to stop them. We must stop them! The very fate of this world is at stake. What are you talking about? Why do I only attract the loonies? Let me start again, from the very beginning. This book is a very ancient text, the Necronomicon. This copy is one of only a few remaining volumes, and all are kept under the strictest of security because of their inherent danger. It is said to have been written by the mad Arabic prophet Abdul al-Hazred in the 8th century, who was witnessed by many to have been devoured in the plain light of day by something unseen. As curator of the Miskatonic University Library, I have access to this copy, but I must warn you, there are those who have lost their minds from a mere glance at certain sections. al Hazrid wrote of a very different reality from the one we assume to know of, a reality in which mankind and all his works plays an extremely marginal role. Let's just say that I have seen for myself proof of some of the book's contents and that they are not as unbelievable as they may seem. According to the text, it seems that certain entities that we named the Great Old Ones have ruled over this and many other worlds from a time way before mankind had even taken its first step. And now they sleep a deep sleep of death, waiting for the stars to align and for their reawakening. In his house at Relaya, dead Cthulhu lies dreaming, but he is able to communicate with his inhuman worshippers and certain particularly sensitive people through their dreams to bring about the ritual he desires. Inhuman worshippers? Horrible, pre-human creatures, and probably our original ancestors. Virtually immortal, able to thrive with equal ease in the depths of the sea or upon land. Anthropologists have proposed contact between these creatures and certain South Sea tribes based on the ancient legends of these natives. Way back in the times when underwater volcanic activity raised eons-old sunken islands back to the surface, these creatures delivered up much bounty to the natives, but never the equal of what they asked for in return. Immortality has its price. These hideous creatures were unable to reproduce. So they demanded to mate with humans, spawning half-breed abominations, which at first looked human, but with the passage of years, more and more like their other parent, and who took to the sea once their time arrived. Obed learned how to contact these beings from an old island shaman. So it was that, with the rites off the Devil Reef, he made first contact with them and began to appease them with human sacrifices. It was around that time that I was inserted into my watchman position here as lighthouse keeper. I was the perfect model. I could see everything that was going on and not arouse the slightest suspicion. For years, all I did was watch and write. And, oh, the things I have watched. The ancient treasures March received were laundered through his gold refinery which was only constructed as a front to hide their subnautical origin. But God himself only knows what else went on there behind closed doors. 
those that spoke out were hunted down and sacrificed. At first, Obed refused to grant the kind of interactions that they desired. But these things are old, of ancient cunning. They convinced him. And now, there are none left in this town with pure human bloodlines intact, apart from poor old Saddam. And do you actually believe these stories? Fishmen marrying humans? I have seen many strange things, but I have learned to prize apart unsubstantiated rumor with the pliers of rational thought. When I started asking my contacts questions about the fate of my brother, Every single one of them provided more and more proof of the truth of these legends. To be honest, I myself was preparing to leave for Innsmouth, but some of my contacts, for obvious reasons I cannot name, convinced me to remain manning my post here at this library due to the vital intelligence it holds. Dare you even imagine how much fear this all fills me with concerning the fate of my dear brother? My contacts specifically requested me to contact you, Lone Carter, and they asked me to tell you all of this to prepare you for. How did I become so famous without noticing it? Who are these people? I cannot divulge their identities. That would place both them and myself in mortal danger. Of course, it is vital that you do not breathe a word of what was said here. And who, who would, would I, I tell? tell? I don't want to get committed, committed to, to an asylum. asylum. You are so young. Why have they sent me one so green? This is the night. The stars have aligned. I heard tell that they have recovered all they need for the ritual. A stranger shall deliver everything up unto them. Who would be so foolish as to assist them? You must stop them. Or all these years of preparation will have been for naught. I'll do my best. Keep watch over the key. Is ready, yes, ready. Tonight you will be hosting a very special guest. He has what we need. Make sure he sleeps deeply here. See you later tonight. Yes, deeply. Yes. Excuse me, have you seen the bus that was waiting outside? Gone. Gone. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh no. Now what am I supposed to do? Free Gilman houseroom for you. Gilman discount. Yes. Discount. Beautiful stranger. Yes. Beautiful. I don't seem to have much of a choice, and I can't turn down a free lodging for the night. I'll take it. Creepy.
Some documents and memos. Nothing of interest. A beautiful statue of some bizarre creature. I've never seen this particular style before. Something happened outside. I'm chained up. You do not look like one of them. Please, save me. Please, help me. That wouldn't help. Set me free. Thank you, thank you. I thought it was gonna die. <laughs> Calm down. Poor John. They ripped him apart. John? John Armitage? Yes, my poor friend John. It's all that remains of him over there. <laughs> Damn. Dr. Armitage will not be too happy about this. Tell me everything that happened. No time for that. We gotta get out of here. Calm down. The tiara. The tiara. Time is short. I told you to calm down. What are you raving about? My mission here was to spread the word of the Lord, but I stuck my nose in where I shouldn't have. I could not grasp why the town followed that abominated faith of theirs. Those things should not be of our world. I hear something. Calm down. John, John, damn. Tell me. No, calm down. I told you to. What are you. My. But I. I could not. No. I hear some. What the hell are those things? I know what they are. That's why I'm still alive. They wanted to know how I knew. Poor John was not so fortunate. That's all my fault. May God have mercy on my soul. Tell me everything. Some time ago, I was approached by the lighthouse keeper who asked me to join him. And I was reluctant to do so. He told me a fantastic story about an organization of which he was a part. That investigates the evil that lurks behind the veil of our reality. <laughs> An organization which only shows its hands in time of dire need. Interesting. I... I think I alienated him when I told him that only Almighty God can defeat pure evil, and that prayer is the sole true weapon of Christian wields. I heard him out, but... Pride goeth before destruction, and naughtiness before a fall. <laughs> so I changed my mind. And I went over to the Church of the Order of Dagon to demand some answers. But all I got in reply was a blow to the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Through the fog of my days, I overheard their conversation with horror. I heard tell of a relic capable when the stars align once again. Of awakening something older than mankind, to which these beings are faithful servants. Do you know what that relic is? Do you know where it is? Yes. It must be that hideous tiara I saw the priest wearing at the altar I was dragged to. 
We must find it before all time runs out. Okay, let's do this. But, which way do we go? Were you conscious when they brought you back here? You remember anything that might help us find our way? I remember the dark. They took the torch from the wall. One of them fell into a pool of water. He cursed in a strange language. I... I took advantage of the momentary distraction. I tried to fight back, but all it gained me was another blow to the head. <laughs> From there on, things get a little fuzzy in my memory. They literally dragged me on. I, I, I recall seeing blood flow into a stream. I, I, I assume it was mine. I recall being dragged out a pitch black corridor before being chained up next to that other poor soul. Now we must go, I beg of you. We're gonna, we're gonna. Yes, you must remain calm or else we will never get out of here alive. What's the matter with you? What the hell is that thing? Run! Run! Go! Go! Here! Catch! Get out of here! Ah! Just take it and get the hell out of here! This one seems less sturdy than the others. I can't. Seems comfortable enough, even if a tad soiled. I think I'll sleep in my clothes, just in case. <laughs> 